close your eyes. When you stay with the breath, remember you want to make the breath your friend. If you're the enemy of your meditation object, it's going to be a really long and difficult relationship. And after all, the breath is the force of life. You want to be on good terms with that force. So when you breathe in, listen to what the breath has to say. In other words, what does it need? What would feel good? You can't just go enforcing it here and forcing it there without paying attention to the results of what you're doing. This is an important part of the practice, is you really have to pay attention to what you're doing and the results of what you're doing. This is called alertness, sampachanya in Pali. And it's a quality that keeps us honest. You can be mindful of all kinds of things. You can keep in mind, in other words, all kinds of things. And you can try to move in a certain direction, but if you're not doing it right, then it's all for nothing. And now you checked whether you're doing it right, well, look at what you're doing and then look at the results. Then change what you're doing and see if it changes the results, how it changes the results. Just like any scientist. You adjust the conditions and see what effect that has. You adjust them a little bit more and see what effect that has, so you can see what's connected to what. And after all, the Buddha's awakening was insight into a really basic causal, causal principle, how causes lead to effects. And it's complex, because it's not just things happening right now, but things happening in the past can also have an influence on what you're doing right, experiencing right now. And so this is how you go in the direction of the Buddha. He didn't get his awakening just out of compassion or just out of a vague sense of wisdom. He was looking very carefully at what he was doing and the results he was getting. He kept adjusting, adjusting, adjusting until they finally got it right. And that's how we progress in the practice. So even though we may have some preconceived notions about what's going to work and what's not going to work, you have to test them by actually putting them into practice. This is where your discernment really becomes discernment that comes from within the mind itself, rather than something that's applied from outside. And this is the kind of discernment that has a lasting effect. So listen carefully to your breath. It's got a lot to tell you. And see if you can become good friends.